education education is considered so imperative for the individual development that the right to primary education is legally guaranteed in most countries of the world in india we too have the right to education now since education is so imperative so it becomes essential that all the children irrespective of their abilities irrespective of their needs they should get primary education and then came the concept of inclusive education now let's understand where did this word inclusive education came from the word inclusive is derived from the word to include which means to have as a part contain an addition to other parts or to put in with something or something else taken or consider as part of a group inclusion refers to the placement and education of children with special educational needs in regular education classrooms with children of the same age who do not have special education needs this concept originated from the phenomena of inherent dignity of all human beings in the sense that we all have a certain amount of inherent dignity irrespective of caste creed color race gender language and the abilities we have inclusion is a basic value which extends to all the children inclusion is a term which can be defined as an attitude it's a commitment of appreciating diversities and accepting that all children can be educated in a common school to their maximum potential it requires an increase in the capacity of the regular schools so that they can respond creatively to the needs of the children to the greater diversities among the children the four elements of inclusion are as follows number 1 inclusion is a process now what does inclusion as a process means this is to say that inclusion has to be seen as a never ending search to find better solutions better ways of responding to the diversity so diversity is the key point here and inclusion is a never ending search to find better ways of responding better solutions better ways of handling diversities it's about learning how to live with difference and learning how to learn from difference not just learning with difference but also learning how to learn from difference coming to the second key point of inclusion inclusion is concerned with the identification and the removal of barriers so consequently it involves collecting collating and evaluating information from a wide variety of sources in order to plan for improvements in policy and practice thirdly inclusion is about the presence participation and achievement of all the students now we need to understand what does these three words mean presence participation and achievement of all the students here the word presence is concerned with where the children are educated and how reliably and punctually they attend so it means attendance participation refers to the quality of their experiences whilst they are there and therefore must incorporate the views of the learners themselves and lastly achievement is about the outcomes of the learning across the curriculum not merely test or examination results so the three key points are presence participation and achievement number fourth key point of inclusion is inclusion involves a particular emphasis on those groups of learner who may be at risk of marginalization exclusion or underachievement now this indicates the moral responsibility to ensure that those groups which are statistically most at risk are carefully monitored and that where necessary steps are taken to ensure their presence participation and achievement in the education system now we all know that children with special needs have been at that high risk group where there is maximum risk that the children would drop out of the system so these children need extra inputs extra measures on the part of the teacher and on the part of the curriculum so that their presence participation and achievement all the three factors are ensured now let us understand what does inclusive education means because we have understood what is inclusion because we have understood what are the key points of inclusive inclusion now we'll be able in, to be in a better position to understand what is inclusive education now let's look at a definition how it is defined inclusive education national commission on special needs in education and training defines inclusive education as a learning environment that promotes the full 
personal, academic and professional development of all the learners irrespective of race, class, gender, disability, religion or any other kind of preference, learning styles and language. So, we are negating all the differences which are there and we are providing education to all the children. That is the basic premise of inclusive education. It's a process whereby the school systems, the strategic plans, the policies, they themselves adapt and change to include teaching strategies for a wider, more diverse range of children and their families. So, more diversity has to be included in the system. So, the system, the strategies, all of them need to adapt to that fact that more diversity has to be included within the system. Inclusive education implicitly means to identify a child's learning style and adapt the classroom teaching strategies to ensure that high quality learning outcomes for all the members of the class are achieved. Now that goes in with that premise of inclusion which talks about achievement of all the students. Now let us understand what are the characteristics of inclusive education. The first and the prime most characteristic of inclusive education is it recognizes and accepts diversity. Number one, recognition and then flows acceptance of diversity. Until and unless we recognize, until and unless we accept, we cannot make suitable arrangements so that all the diversity is catered to. So the first characteristic of inclusive education would be recognition and acceptance of diversity. Second, education for all in the schools for all. So one premise and making arrangements in such a manner that all the children can have the education in the same setup. The third characteristic of inclusive education is acceptance and support to the children with special educational needs. Since we are talking of the same educational setup for all the children irrespective of their needs, so we need to make that arrangements so that children with special needs are also being taught in the same environment. The fourth characteristic of inclusive education is special educational needs is assumed as a national school system responsibility. So it's not something which we are making extra efforts for. It has to be considered something as which is national and it's a responsibility of the school to provide such opportunities. It should not be a USP of the school. It has to be a basic premise of each and every school. Next characteristic of inclusive education is flexible teaching strategies and curriculum. There needs to be a certain kind of flexible in teaching strategies and curriculum because of the diversity of the learners which we are catering to. Next, there needs to be a close licensing between the teachers, the parents and the community in the education. Since all these are a part of the education system, whether directly or indirectly, so they all should be contributing to the same. Then moving further, the next characteristic of inclusive education is appropriate policy planning. Until and unless there is an appropriate policy planning, there is adequate policy arrangements made for the special education needs children, we cannot expect that the inclusive education can come in its full form. So adequate policy planning needs to be taken at all the levels, whether it's at the government level, whether it's at the district level or whether it's at the school level. So if there is going to be all these characteristics, then we accept that it's an inclusive education system. Now we have understood what is inclusive education but amongst this discussion we need also need to understand what inclusive education is not. There are certain situations which are at times taken that it's like inclusive education however they are not. So let's just understand what are those situations. Number one, educating children part time in special schools and part time in regular schools. If this kind of arrangement is made that children are being taught for some classes in special schools and for some part-time arrangements in regular schools, it's not inclusive education. Why it is not inclusive education? Because in inclusive education, it's the same classroom which should be catering to all your needs. And it's the same classroom which should be catering to everybody's needs. So if the children are being taught for part-time in special schools and part-time in regular schools, this is not inclusive education. Similarly, Dumping children with special needs into the regular classrooms with no other kind of arrangements being made for them, no curriculum flexibility being made for them, then it is not inclusive education. The purpose is just not to attain the presence. The purpose is achievement 
and the purpose is participation also. The third condition which is not inclusive education is educating children in special segregated environments in regular schools. The basic school is the same and these children are being taught in special segregated environments. Mind it, this is not inclusive education because again the children are not in the same classroom with all the regular children. Then, educating children in regular classes but different courses of study. Even in this case, it is not going to be considered as inclusive education because they are not studying the same thing. So, definitely the experiences are going to be different. So, if they are going to study in the same classroom, they should be having a similar curriculum and they should be studying similar course of study. Moving further, now let us understand what is the need for inclusive education. There has been so much of hoop halla around the same, but we need to really understand that what is the need for inclusive education. The number one is the educational prospects. Providing quality inclusive education, which provides an enriched environment to all the children and provides them with an opportunity to learn from one another and gain the attitudes, skills and values necessary for the existing community. Besides the academic skills, they learn communication and the social skills used in daily life. Now, this is the educational benefits or the educational constraints or the educational uh, compulsions which we are gaining from inclusive education. Besides educational benefits, there are other factors also which are supporting the need for inclusive education. One of them is sociological factors. Inclusive education promotes the social value of equality. If the schools are going to be inclusive, they are going to provide wider social acceptance. There is going to be peace. There is going to be cooperation among the people, among the children from different diverse backgrounds. So, this is a sociological factor behind inclusive education. Moving further, now let us understand that there are different economic compulsions also for the same. Now, according to rough estimates, almost 10% of the people with some or the other form of disability are in India. Now, that is a staggering number. That means almost 60 million people with disabilities are in our country. Now, this segment cannot be ignored in any case while planning for education development and the employment. The economic compulsions which push towards the inclusive education are something like additional special schools, physical infrastructure is needed, human resources are needed. Now, all of these would incur certain kind of expenses if we intend to meet the needs of education children with special needs in special schools. However, if we move them to a regular school, obviously these needs are still going to be there but the number which would be required in terms of the money which would be required for the human infrastructure or the physical infrastructure would be comparatively less as compared to if you are educating these children in the special schools. The fourth perspective which is pushing us towards inclusive education is the humanitarian perspective. This states that the child with disability should have the same range of opportunities, experiences and conditions of everyday life that are typically available to the non-disabled children in the community and that appropriate development and educational programs should be provided to enable the child with disability to share in, contribute to and benefit maximally from the everyday life. Every child, every child irrespective of their needs has the enormous potential for growth. If this perspective is accepted, we obviously accept that inclusive education needs to be there. Now, besides the above stated factors, there are legal provisions also. The constitution of India has provided an equitable education to all. We have right to education which says primary education for all the children in the age group of 6 to 14 year irrespective of the diversities. All the children whether they have special needs or not have the right to education. This makes it legally also compulsive that arrangements are made by the government and the private sector equally to provide inclusive education in their schools. Besides all the five discussed factors, there are certain international pressures also. At various conferences, conventions, efforts have been made to provide inclusive education. Some of the important ones are the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child in the year 1989, the UN Standard Rules in the Equalization of Opportunities for Persons with Disability which was given in 1993, 
then there is unesco salmanka statement which was given in 1994 all of these have been talking about that inclusive education should be provided to all the children in all the countries whether they are developing countries or whether they are developed countries now after understanding the need let us understand whether there are certain kind of advantages also associated with inclusive education more than the developed countries inclusive education bears importance for developing countries now this seems to be ironical but this is actually a fact that more than the developed countries inclusive education is a need more for the developing countries there are different reasons for the same practicing inclusive education would prove beneficial in the following aspects number 1 the efficient use of resources so education as a system education as an aspect is a resource intensive venture a lots of resources are required whether it is in terms of the physical resources or whether it is in the terms of human resources and they have to compete against the other demands of the country like healthcare infrastructure etc specifically when it comes to the developing countries developing countries do not have an extra vacant budget for themselves they have limited resources and there are demands from each and every sector from the healthcare from the infrastructure from the education sector everywhere there is therefore always a resource crunch for education in the developing countries now setting up schools for different groups of students would not be possible for these countries or may would be possible if possible in a very limited number of uh, countries instead using the limited resources for the benefits of all the types of students would be a viable opportunity as it makes use of the resources efficiently so in this way it's an advantage for the developing countries secondly there is a certain kind of cost effectiveness which is associated with inclusive education this flows from the first factor if you look at it closely inclusive education is not only cost efficient but also cost effective inclusion promises the enhancement not only of the disabled but also of the non disabled learners so this is a myth which is generally associated with inclusive education is that it is going to benefit the children with special needs more as compared to the children who do not have any kind of special needs however the research has shown that inclusive education provides a greater benefits to both to the disabled people also and to the non disabled learners also so in that case it becomes cost effective also and not just cost efficient so it achieves good education for all the children taking care of the individual differences among the different learners in addition inclusive education acts against stratification of the society helping to maintain harmony in different groups of the society similarly there is another benefit which is associated with inclusive education which is decentralization the practice of inclusive education encourages a certain form of decentralization decentralization as it is evident allows national as well as the local governments to reduce the spending on the central management and the administrative cost so maybe it's the money factor which is involved in all the three advantages of inclusive education if we talk in terms of the technical terms or if we talk in terms from the government point of view besides these kind of advantages there are so many other advantages of inclusive education because it creates a kind of social harmony in the society it brings a feeling of brother in the society there is a feeling of acceptance of diversity in the society so overall inclusive education is going to incur a number of advantages for all the setups whether it's they are developing countries or whether they are the developed countries now we have understood and we accept that why there is a need for inclusive education now let's move further and let's see what an inclusive school looks like what are the different characteristics of an inclusive school as disabling educational environments affect all the children not only those who are identified as having impairments it is essential that school quality issues are identified and addressed so school quantity school quality is a key point here that needs to be identified also and they need to be addressed also inclusive schools are developing in a unique way based on the needs of their individual students and the communities so both individual students and the communities both their needs are making a dent in how the inclusive schools are going to develop all the inclusive schools however 
have certain common features that characterize their success. Amongst these common characteristics, uh, we are going to discuss few. Number one is a sense of community. An inclusive school is a school where every child is respected as part of the school community and where each child is encouraged to learn and achieve as much as possible. Secondly, there is a common vision. There is a shared vision that sees each child as a respected member of the community and brings a common goal and connectedness to every participant, whether they are the parents, administrators, school staff or students. Thirdly, the problem solving teams. All the inclusive schools would have teams which comprised of significant participants in every child's program and they are formed to make decisions concerning how a student's individual needs may be met. Fourthly, the parents are partners. Parents as partners are a key point in any kind of inclusive school. There is a significant addition observed in inclusive schools is the solid inclusion of parents as full members of the school team. They are included in, uh, from the stage of planning to the stage of execution as partners. Similarly, besides parents, teachers are also considered to be as partners. Now, these are the teachers who are not just the regular teachers, but they may be the special education teachers also. So, teaming by regular education teachers and special education teachers provides classes with the expertise of not just one, but two teachers that adds to the development of the children. Sixth, paraprofessionals as partners. Depending on the need of the child, there may be situations where paraprofessionals are also needed for imparting education to the children. So, paraprofessions also play an equally significant role by providing continuity and support for the students, staff, families, etc. Insightful perspective and planning and consistent service delivery are two of the vital parts which the paraprofessionals play on the problem solving team of the schools. Then seventh, students are considered as problem solvers. So successful inclusive schools involve students as partners in the school community. Common among inclusive school is the use of students as peer mediators, peer tutoring, cross-age tutoring, cooperative learning, problem solvers, buddy systems. So, all these systems help in the same. Then, number eighth is the community members as partners. Community involvement has been increased throughout the use of volunteers to the mentor students. They provide tutoring, they provide support and support staff in varied and unique ways, which enhances the diversity of the student body. Coming to the next characteristic of an inclusive school, they use a common language. A sense of community is created by establishing a common language without the use of intellectual and confusing terms so that all the participants can equally understand. Then another characteristic which may be the last in the sequence but it is an important characteristic is the time for planning. Inclusive practices require additional planning and additional scheduling of time would be needed for the same. So, we need to understand that there is need for proper planning also. Besides, there are few other characteristics of an inclusive school like they bring services to the student which may be similar depending on the needs of the child. There is flexible scheduling in terms of time also, in terms of curriculum also. Then there may be co-teaching where teachers are required to be partners and they work together for the children. Moving further, now let's see how does an inclusive classroom looks like? What are the keys to a successful classroom? Successful inclusive classroom. The teacher needs to be sensitive enough to these keys because only then the teacher will be able to ensure a truly inclusive classroom. Even if the policy planning has been done, even if the school has made inclusive education compulsory, till the teacher acknowledges the importance of the same and till the teacher makes an effort to create an inclusive classroom in their own classrooms, it would be a failure. So, the teachers need to be sensitive enough and the teachers need to be cautious enough that they are making their own efforts to create an inclusive classroom. The number one key point would be the students need to be active and not passive learners. The teachers need to understand that for creating a truly inclusive classroom, 
the students have to be active learners. They just cannot be sitting back on the chair and act in the form of passive learners. They have to be active learners. Secondly, the children should be encouraged to make choices as often as possible. Now, a good teacher would be somebody who allows students to flounder, to make mistakes, but then give them choice to make some of the most powerful learning stems from taking risk and learning from mistakes. If the teacher gives that kind of environment, if the teacher lets the children falter, if the teacher lets the children decide on their own, she is working towards to make a classroom as a truly inclusive classroom. Thirdly, parental involvement is crucial. As we have understood, as we have already discussed, that when it comes to an inclusive school, the partnership with the parents becomes very important. Because it's the parents who understand the needs of the child sometimes in a better manner as compared to the teacher. So, if they are going to be partners in the system, then results are going to be better. But the teacher needs to understand that the parents can be equally contributing. Until unless she accepts it, until unless she encourages the parents to do the same, she is not truly complying to the fact that she is intending to make a classroom as an inclusive classroom. Then fourth, students with disability must be free to learn at their own pace, have accommodations and alternative assessment strategies in place to meet their unique needs. Now here comes the role of the curriculum. Here comes the role of the assessment. So the schools need to make that kind of arrangement, the teachers need to make that kind of arrangement that there is flexibility in timings, there is flexibility in terms of assessment, there is flexibility in terms of the teaching strategies so that the unique needs, the specific needs of all the children are met. Whether these children are children with special needs or whether these children are children without special needs. The fifth characteristic of an inclusive classroom would be the students need to experience success. They need to make learning goals to be specific, attainable and measurable and have some challenge to them. So we need to understand that the children may be limited in certain kind of abilities. So the goals need to be set keeping in mind their abilities. You cannot discount the abilities and make goals the similar for everybody. The teacher needs to understand that different children have different abilities and the goals would be different for different children. But these goals should be measurable because she needs to definitely do an assessment that how far the child has reached. And of course, these goals should have some kind of challenge element to them. Until and unless the child feels that kind of challenge, the child won't be able to work in that direction. So the inclusive schools have these characteristics and the inclusive classrooms has these kind of key points which the teacher needs to keep in mind. Now, establishing successful inclusive ex education takes a mixture of vision, takes a mixture of leadership, it requires commitment, it requires collaborative planning, it requires knowledge and it requires time. Now, if all these things get amalgamated together and there is a sincere commitment on the part of the management, sincere commitment on the part of the administrative authorities and sincere commitment on the part of the teachers. Definitely, the classroom is going to be more inclusive. It involves looking at the big picture and attending to the details. Inclusive education is looking at the big picture and attending to the smaller details of the system. And inclusive education, lastly, it requires a tremendous commitment to change. Because we all are accustomed to certain kind of education system in the rut, so, it gets very difficult to have that kind of a commitment to change the system also. But if we get that kind of commitment, since there is a lot of pressure from the government side also, people are acknowledging the importance. Now, we do not see that that date is going to be far off when the, all the schools in India are going to be truly inclusive in the purest sense. Thank you all. That's all for the session.